welcome back again thanks for joining me um, this video is going to be about clocks um, because we've got some new clocks um, and they are little ones forgive the rustling noise let's get rid of that um, I've only got one here to show you it's still got its pl plastic um, cover on but but we've got these and they've got a little they're not the same as most because they've actually got a, a curved bezel on there because we, th we thought those are the most attractive ones um, that we could get. So we've got these in three sizes and at the end of the video I'll show you two of the things that I've already done. Um, but I'm going to just show you how to um, go about turning a case if you like for, for this one. This is the 45mm one. This is probably the most difficult one to do because of its size. Don't ask me why they're made 45mm. Um, but they are they fit with a little rubber ring um, around here um, and we're going to just make a little case for this uh, and i'm going to try to do something a, a bit more elaborate towards the end but the main thing is to show you how to fit this case the smaller one the 36 millimeter that uses a 35 mil drill you can drill a hole in that and plonk the clock straight in the 51 millimeter is a similar principle to to this one that's of course unless you can find a 42 millimeter drill because i confess i couldn't find one anywhere Right, what I'm going to start with um, is a block of wood, um, 60 mils by 60 mils square. And I've got to stress now, this is this is how I do them. There's probably lots of other ways of doing them, depending on what equipment you've got, how you want to hold your, your stock or whatever. So I've got that, I've marked the centres. I am just going to trim the corners off on the bandsaw just to save lots of waste and scrap flying around the workshop. Um, I'm going to turn a little tenon, put, these, put this in the jaws on the chuck turn it round, make the correct size for the clock, then turn it round and do the shaping and finishing on the other side. That's the plan. I've trimmed it round, I've put a little dovetail on the back, I'm now going to set this in jaws so we can look at turning the correct size at the front here. To start off the hole to get it nearly the right size and I'm going to drill probably down about five or six millimeters as long as the entire clock will fit in that will be okay so not too high a speed um, I'm just going to hold the chuck as I drill and just very gently go in Just done it by eye. I can see that's plenty deep enough there to to um, to inset the clock. No problem at all. And we're going to shape the back anyway, so I'm not too worried about the back. So we'll move the drill out of the way, and we'll now bring um, the tool wet around the front. Because what I'm going to do is just trim this now by hand to get it the right size for the clock. Now, if I leave the tool rest just a little bit away I should be able to test the clock in and out because that's what I'm going to do trim a tiny bit and test the clock in and out now it's important to stress at this point when you're trimming a hole in the center you are essentially trimming at a point of radius that will actually affect the diameter and to explain that a bit clearer if you take a millimeter off where you're cutting it doesn't just take a millimetre off here, it takes a millimetre off all the way round. So one millimetre trimmed, as you look at it here, will actually take two millimetres off the diameter. So you need to be very careful and very accurate when you actually cut these. But I've said that, it's really not that difficult. Hopefully the camera's in a place where you'll be able to see what I'm doing, but I might have to lean in front of it just to get it absolutely spot on. Now we're getting somewhere close. And another little tip here, if you want to get um, not sure about your cutting, you can cut the very front here 
and if you do happen to go slightly too big if you haven't cut all the way in you can trim off the front and you can start again if you go all the way in straight away and you make a mess of it then pretty much you're knackered um, So I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up, but I've just gone in probably two mils, something like that, just to see if I've got the right size. And that is actually fitting in, in that two millimetres. So I know that's the right size. I can take that line and I can work that all the way back through. And I'm hoping, having done that, I'm going to say with absolute confidence this is now going to fit in no problem at all. It does have to be a good fit. And to be honest, if that wasn't in the way of me putting it in, it probably would be. Um, there we go. That is quite a nice fit. Um, now the next thing you'll have to do is actually fight to get it out again so we can finish the project. And what I'm actually going to do when I've got it out here we go, um, is put it put it to one side because it's in a dusty environment which isn't great and um, put it to one side. I'm actually going to just trim and finish this. This is the front of the clock now because then what we're going to do is turn it around and quickly finish the back. So having got that far and finished the front, and you can finish this more later if you want to, if you've got something like a buffing wheel, I, I use a buffing wheel all the time for polishing all manner of things, I, I like it much more than a lathe because I can polish with the grain as opposed to continually against the grain. Um, what we're now going to do is um, get a different set of jaws and turn this round, uh, use expanding jaws on the inside and we're just going to shape the rest of that um, piece of wood. Got a little bit of scrap. I've drilled a 35 millimeter hole in the bottom, and I'm just going to mount that and make a stand for the clock. So my plan having made a little base and having this bit that I drilled a six millimeter hole in the back of is to use one of our fiddle rail parts here, screw that on there with uh, the small length of brass rod and hopefully make it look when you look from the front as though the clock's actually floating in midair. Um, that's the plan. I'm going to go and screw these bits together. I will bring it back and show you in a moment. So I've got my little stand, I've got my fiddle rail pillar there, I've got a little bit of 6mm brass rod, that's going to fit in there and hopefully when you look from the front you'll be able to see the thing at the back a little bit but it'll look like it's floating. I guess I should pop the clock mechanism in, that would be a good idea wouldn't it? Right. Here we go. And the advantage of this is you can I can actually centre the whole thing. I could probably glue it in there, but obviously for the, the purpose of showing you this, that is 
um, our little clock project finished. That is the 45mm clock. Um, I've got the other ones, I'll get them out in a second and show you. Right, well you can see here the, uh, the couple of projects that I've done. Um, actually let me show you them in order of size. That is a 36mm one there, if you can see that. Um, and I've used the little laser engraver to put Tempest Fugit at the bottom. Time flies, for those that don't know what that means. Um, then the one we've done today, which is the floating, um, or appears to float a clock on its little stand there. That's the 45mm clock. And another one I've done, not dissimilar to the 45mm, but this one I've just literally cut the bottom off and curved the background and that just stands on its own and that is the 51mm. They are really quite lovely little clocks. Um, that one's actually still got its plastic cover on as, as has that one. But you can see if I hold that one up there, that one is actually going. I've set that one going because I have that one on my desk. Um, and it's rather nice I have to say. So I hope that little guide has helped, um, maybe inspired you to make um, one of the little clocks. Uh, they're really quite nice gifts um, and as always um, please come and have a look around the website if we can help with anything drop us an email. Until next time, happy turning and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye for now.